I want to show you a general view of the Noe Garden. This is along the side of the greenhouse. And this is along the back of the greenhouse. So let me take you on a little close up. Let's start with the melons. I've got, um, I grew two types of melons last year. I grew Oshkirgoza, Kyrgyzia, or something like that, and ooh, I can't remember the other one, uh, but I just, uh, I'll put it in the video, the name of it. But anyway, um, I just picked two of them. I just mixed the seed. They're sort of similar similar in shape for sure and somewhat similar in taste but uh, I decided to plant those you can see they're growing over the edge and the ones that grow over the edge I'll either try to put back in the middle but if it's so crowded I'll just mow them over um, I got some cantaloupe there as well those are F2 ambrosias that means that wonderful ambrosia melon hybrid and I just saved the seed from one of them and that's what's growing in here now they could have gotten cross-pollinated with the um, Sharon Tace cantaloupe um, I'm not sure the ambrosia is more or less a cantaloupe it's considered a melon but it's a, it's a very good melon and the Sharon Tace could have crossed we'll find out when we get some babies on here see how they grow so that's a little tour of the melons. I do have some powdery mildew, um, as you can see there. It's been raining like a dog lately. This one's got the worst of it. And uh, I'll remove the leaves and treat those. But for the most part, the newer growth seems to be doing pretty good without the powdery mildew. The melons are overtaking a cantaloupe, and I like cantaloupe better than melons. So I might have to do something about that. I'll take you in to look at some peppers. Um, this is a tangerine dream. And I got rid of the other ones because they were pointed. One pointed up, one pointed down, and they were both fairly thin. This one's really thick, like a bell pepper. Uh, this tangerine dream is, uh, is all over the place. Uh, next to it, I've got some flaming flares growing outside lots of greens I don't see a red in there yet beautiful plant tangerine dreams a beautiful plant let's come over here to this one this one's a a uh, bell pepper called blue star <clears throat> and down here I've got uh, this is a cayenne and this thing has got a lot and I don't know if you can see it it has got it is prolific as heck and there's a lot of peppers in there sorry about my noisemaker it's pretty damaged all right we'll look at some eggplants now this is a Lestata de Gardia right there and uh, it looks like it's got some spider mite issues. I have not sprayed these yet. And the next two over, which is a Black Beauty and another Lestata, those I trimmed way back in the greenhouse and they're already coming on strong. Looks like there's some new spider mite damage, but I'll, I'll attempt to take care of that as well. I moved them outside so the beneficial insects can uh, hopefully take care of those. This is a sugar pie pumpkin. This is an acorn, yellow acorn, which is a winter squash. I've got another acorn here, another acorn here, and another acorn here. And this one has got some powdered mildew, as you can see. Which, most of the time, I just chop the leaves off if they're heavy like that and wipe them down. Breathing hard here. Finish up on the back of the greenhouse, I've got... So Cherokee Purple, Succeed, not sure because I can't read it, 
anyway you can see here this one this one this one this one this one and a few others and on the other side over here I gotta watch where my fingers pointing in the camera it's different than what I actually see but those were the ones in the greenhouse uh, that had some big-time issues some of the ones that are in the greenhouse had some big-time issues I pulled out some other bad tomatoes that I had overwintered they weren't doing successful anymore it was time to get rid of them over here on the other side I pulled out some of the squash that I didn't like the growing habits that I'm breeding so I put some tomatoes in for those and sub those out and with that transition let's move over to the one closest to uh, the side of the greenhouse I've got a line three viner here 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 and here and those are breeding squash that's a vining yellow that I'm working on there's also one here as I can tell I think I've chosen the one of those that I'm going to continue forward and let's see here I believe it is yep this one I like the way that one tasted this is the line two and even though it didn't taste that great um, I'm gonna carry it forward another generation and I pollinated that squash right there and it took I can tell because it's growing and I'm gonna see what the F4 generation will produce but it's a beast it's absolutely a beast it's got some powdery mildew on it uh, pretty bad so I need to take care of that I've just been neglecting these as much for the powdery mildew anyway outside I've got several other um, line one squash there there and then of course the, some over there 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 here here and here this is pot five what I like about pot five which I haven't discussed yet is these squash get really pretty darn good size and they keep the flower on so you can see here this one I haven't even opened yet and it's it's a decent size um, what I'm looking for here is I'm going to close off the squash flowers and I'm going to see how big they get unpollinated before uh, they start trying to die off and the reason being is if it can get I pulled one off that was about four inches and it still had the flower on it these are samples from each pot line number two <coughs> is kind of or pot number two is kind of promising for not having to pollinate definitely need to keep an eye out because that's oh probably four inches or so and that has still got the flower on it so if they can get about four or five inches if I can breed that into it before they start trying to die off that's basically saying you don't have to uh, you don't have to pollinate them and they'll produce this is my fantastic favorite I have pollinated a second squash here we'll see if that takes in the next couple of days I've been pulling the babies off and this thing just says to heck with you I'm gonna throw more than you can possibly imagine at you and I'm gonna make you bending over hurt buddy I mean they're freaking everywhere there's the seed squash for this one the first one I pollinated it's looking a little battered but the seed in there I don't think care very much much smaller by comparison is pot three and pot three seed squash is quite big um, I don't know if you can see my hand next to it not very cam not very good camera work huh guys <laughs> anyway that's a uh, that's a big dang squash already and started getting hard yet and you can see coming in close that it does produce a lot of babies it's just that with the seed squash going these things are not they're not pollinating and they're not uh, getting bigger 
So that's a little bit of a difference between pot three over there and pot five there and pot five. Over here are some candy onions I let go to seed. I just planted a bunch that I grew last year, the full big bulbs. And I knew the second year that they would uh, produce a whole lot of uh, seed stalks because that's what onions do in the second year. Also on the back side here, I let the Alamo turnip greens go to seed. And I'm going to save the seed from this one and this one because that's kind of what I do. I, I save the seed from even hybrids and I'll grow them out and make selections and see if they're even worth doing. Most of the time they're not, but sometimes, sometimes it's good. In the middle here, just I just got them out of the way so I can mow. But you can also see onions here. Those are banana shallots. And I'm attempting to let them go to seed as well. Tomatoes over here. This one's a promising, believe it or not, that's a succeed. And um, it's growing. A um, little bigger tomatoes, not quite as big a truss on that particular one. I've got a Dester Amish here. Uh, I believe Dester's a pink also. And this, like I said, this is another one that I pulled out of the greenhouse. And they're, they're making a comeback here. I don't see any blooms yet. They're a little too stressed, I think. Right next to it's another one of my succeed. I like the colors on this one, and the coloration on this one. I like, and in, in the taste test I did, that was a dark tomato. It was really dark. It was on the darker side of what I've seen from this line. And uh, these are shaping out to be the two color, dark and uh, well, lighter. I don't know quite how to explain it. It's not got heavy trusses on it, but honestly, it's been through some heck. And it looks like it's trying to come back here if you look at the top. So i got to do a little bit of wrapping, make it a little bigger. Hopefully, they'll start fruiting again. Over there in the corner is a San Marzano Ridorta, as well as here. Again, those in the greenhouse, and they took a big hit, but... Uh, those tomatoes are really really good paste tomato and I've got looks like another one over there I've got at least three going and um, those make really good refrigerator pickles and uh, You know I know because I tasted them <laughs> remember how I did the pickling Well today I tasted the beets and I tasted the squash. I tasted everything in the refrigerator beets squash and uh, and the uh, tomato, green tomatoes. And the green tomatoes were made out of the San Marzano Redortas there. It's a great tasting red paste as well. And I've got some over there that are reddening up. So um, just a, a, vi a verbal on the taste test. I'll go ahead and tell you on the pickles. The beets were perfect. They, they were fantastic. The green tomatoes um, that I canned, not canned, did the refrigerator pickles on. They had a little bit too much of a vinegar bite for me, but they were still good. And the squash tasted like crap. I don't know why, but it did. All from the same uh, brine, if you will, sugar brine, that I made the pickles with. The beets were perfect. So the lesson I learned is do the beets the exact same way. Do the tomatoes, cut it with water so it's not quite as acidic tasting and skip the squash so that's pretty much it guys this thing is doing a lot better than the greenhouse right now and surprisingly uh, very very easy to do you cannot get easier than putting some plastic down putting some containers onto it putting some PVC watering to do it automatically absolutely easy and everything growing in it seems to love it. Just about every kind of vegetable you can think of, spring and summer crop, like it. Um, so, one last thing. I've got some dead soldiers here. And those are ones that are not going to go anywhere. I'll pick some green tomatoes off of it and some more red ones. But 
I've got everything filled up that I need in the greenhouse and on the uh, no weed garden. And those are, <laughs> it's funny, my wife came out and, yelled, and not yelled at me because she don't yell at me. She asked me politely, what are you doing? She never yells at me. <laughs> anyway, these are my dead soldiers and they unfortunately are going to get sacrificed because I've got too much going on everywhere else so I've got a greenhouse update coming and I'm hoping that you like it it is salvaged um, I'm a little concerned about the tomatoes but anyway I'll, I'll bring that to you before too long okay this is Brent we will see you later